The views expressed by the host of the In Full Bloom book club series are not necessarily those held by In Full Bloom Media. Our hosts do not claim to be experts on the topics we discuss, but instead will express opinions derived from their own experiences. The In Full Bloom book club is committed to exploring real issues that affect humanity. These conversations may be challenging and heavy, but we believe them to be necessary and hope they will be empathy cultivating and transformative for the host and for all of you. Please remember that these discussions are made for an adult audience, so view at your discretion. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here with us again. So this episode is a little different. We're doing, we're going to introduce the second book of our season. It's Scorpion Fish by Natalie Bacopoulos. Um, So we already have the synopsis. We're going to go ahead and read over that. Um, The description, in the description box, you will have a link to the book, which you can go ahead and click on and purchase the book and follow along with us. So we're going to go ahead and read the synopsis now. The scorpion fish synopsis reads, after the unexpected deaths of her parents, young academic Mira returns to her childhood home in Athens. On her first night back, she encounters a new neighbor, a longtime ship captain who has found himself for the first time in years, no longer at sea. As one summer night tumbles into another, Mira and the captain's voices drift across the balconies of their apartments, disclosing details and stories of careers, of family, of love. Scorpion Fish is a map of how and where we find our true selves. In the pool of the sea, the sway of late night music, I'm sorry, the sway of late night bar music, the risk and promise of art, and in the sparkling electric charge of endless possibility. Natalie Bakapulovs weaves a story of vulnerability, desire, and bittersweet truth, unraveling old ways of living, and in the end, creating something new. Our first question will be just general expectations for the book. So what are some of the themes or ideas you think we may encounter in this novel? Some of your expectations um, for the novel. I will say I'm hesitant on this one. Okay. Um, Not to immediately start it off on a negative Nancy part of this, but hey, I'll go. We appreciate your honesty. Yeah. So (laughs) even when I saw this one on the list, I had to really put my trust in you guys because I was like, I know they won't pick a bad book, but that synopsis to me sounds like a lot of the cheesy romance kind of things. I'm like, oh, so the captain's going to be the scorpion fish and like, it's going to be this whole thing. And I was like, Ugh, I don't, I don't know about this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, the themes sound good and they, you know, I'm lost and reconnecting with people and all of those kind of things but I have um this is one that I I hope I end up completely loving and I almost am sure I will because I am being so negative about it at the current moment (laughs) Bridget that's funny that you say that because I had um, a similar hesitancy so I love some of the themes that would be covered I love exploration of like coming back to your childhood home and how that looks from you know, the standpoint of your life now and um, exploring what this unexpected um, and devastating change means for your life, all of that. I was very excited about that. And um, because this season is uh, focused in part on kind of our journeys through um, our early adulthood or young adulthood, I was really excited for how we could explore. But I, I believe this was the book, Asia, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the book that I was like, oh my gosh, I really love it, but I kind of wish the part where, like, she has this romance with this guy isn't in here, um, <laughs> because I don't know, yeah, my, my, I had the same type of gut reaction where it was just like, I guess, I don't know, we're so used to novels being so, I don't know, sometimes it all, almost seems like there's such an exploration of a character that feels so meaningful and so unique and so real to people's lives. And then it seems like in movies, for example, sometimes it gets, for me, it gets a little dulled or overshadowed by the romance. Yeah, this romance that seems like, honestly, sometimes, you know, 
I don't know, like maybe not super well thought out. I feel like that sounds really critical, but I don't know. It just seems like we had to put a romance in there to capture the audience's attention. And so we put a romance in there. You know, I, I think love is a beautiful thing to explore and a worthwhile thing to explore as well. But I think that's funny because I had a similar um, hesitancy. Well, I am honestly the other side of the coin. I'm very excited about this book. <laughs> and maybe for those reasons, I am definitely a diehard romantic fan. I love things like that I am very corny so I'm okay with that but however I do I will agree I don't want it to focus too much on like that romantic um um relationship between the two characters I just kind of I'm more interested in the fact that they're both kind of navigating this world of build rebuilding themselves after certain like it just seems like there's like a rebuild like she just lost her family and he's like back home from sea from you know from being out in sea for a long time and I just kind of want to see that evolution rather than oh, they fall in love and they're yeah. happy together, you know? So that's where I'm at. Yeah. I think we're definitely going to see some themes about pain and loss. And I think we're going to see some things about maybe being beautiful on the outside, but having this kind of like poisonous, maybe deadly inside playing on, on the title of the book a little. Yeah. <laughs> so I agree. I definitely think obviously pain and loss is going to be, I imagine that would be a major part of this narrative. And I think it's, uh, fitting for just you know all the pain and loss obviously she they're well no it's it's fitting for all the pain and loss that we've experienced in, over 2020 and so um you know and some in some mi pretty difficult ways it may uh resonate with us with us in yeah. some way and with our audience in some way um but hopefully some ways that will um connect us to the pain that the world is experiencing in a way that um is maybe cathartic or healing or um, that provides us a path and avenue, a motivation to um, be of service. So that's my hope. Um, our second question, any predictions about the relevancy of the title Scorpion Fish to the novel, to the narrative? I'm sure that there will be. I think that you could make the assumption based off the synopsis that there's this like I said before, there's this idea about being beautiful on the outside, but maybe having some type of turmoil or treacherous on the inside. So I do think that there's probably going to be a connection. Okay. It's in Greece. That's an island that's very much known for like fishing and, and right. things that are not fishing and things like that. That sounds silly, but um, it, it, <laughs> I think it plays into the environment of kind of where the setting is. For sure. Yeah. What is a scorpion fish? It's like, you know, you know, like a lionfish. Have you ever seen a lionfish? It's, it's the ones that are red and white and they have all like the fanned out extremities. Oh, okay. okay. A scorpion fish is like that, but it doesn't have all the extremities. It's just okay. kind of like the body. It's okay. also poisonous, but there's several different species of poisonous scorpion fish. Ah, okay. So yeah, given that um, new understanding, I see what you're saying in regard to um, the outside kind of being beautiful, but got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, yeah okay. but I, I agree with you, Joshua. It definitely seems like it's going to play in somehow with that. And I think anytime you have a theme where like, you're exploring new love, but there's obviously a lot of hurt from past love, like they, you know, even just in the synopsis, it talks about the two a friend and an ex lover that she was in love with, you know? So I think anytime you have those kind of themes, you kind of get into the area of like, why the relationships failed on their part, why it failed on her part. And, you know, you, you start getting into that territory of where everybody's toxic traits are as well. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. I think after hearing and understanding what a scorpion fish is now, I am kind of thinking um, scorpion fish might, I don't know, just throwing this out here, maybe like a time in all of our lives where I think there was a time when we were talking about where kind of we all put on a face at a certain time in our lives, especially when it's like really dark. And I think maybe there might be a moment or something, the book might kind of mention something like that, where things on the outside may look great, but um, on the inside, it's just very, it's kind of destructive or something. And um, I don't know. I think it might resonate with a lot of people just because we all kind of have those periods of time in our lives where, you know, we just have to suck it up for other people's sake. But then on the inside, we're really just breaking down. 
So I don't know. I think it might be one of those things that kind of connects all of our different experiences with that. So, all right, guys. So our third question, how important are relationships in your personal narrative? How much have acquisitions, loss, and change of relationships played a role in your life? I would say largely <laughs> for me. Um, we were just talking off camera about the fact that I always say these days that um, people are our greatest resources. And I think they're also, um, yeah, just a large part of what make us us, what motivates us. Um, I was looking at a TED talk one day and they were talking about how they have this um, 75 year research study. It's a Harvard research study. Um, I believe they were saying it's the only one of its kind, but they studied like life satisfaction over a long period of time. Um, and the best indicator of, I believe if I and recalling correctly of both longevity and of life satisfaction in um, older age was good relationships. And so I think I would imagine as you know, social creatures, it's a large part of our personal narratives. We're all in a relationship with something. Yeah. Uh, every component of our life is a relationship with something, right? Uh, we have a relationship with work, we have a relationship with food, we have a relationship with our mental health. I think everything is a relationship. So I don't think that we can exist, at, Tia, as you mentioned, kind of like it, it, as a species without the relationship part. I don't think that we are able to be disconnected from each other. I don't, I don't think that we have that option. And mm -hmm. so I would imagine that there's gonna be a heavy emphasis about relationships in this book, but I think that it is going to be that I think that's why we're all going to be able to see ourselves represented in the text and with the narrative because it's going to speak to some part of our relationship identity in a different way mm -hmm. absolutely I agree wholeheartedly with you Joshua um yeah like you said we have a relationship with any and everything that's in our lives and I mean just look at it's evident and just how we can respond we respond to certain things like again the type of treatment we get from our family and how we treat other people and the time that it takes, you know, the time we put in certain things. I immediately thought about our recent loss with our uh, family pet and how that had like a huge, you know, emotional impact. And it surprised me even just because, you know, we aren't, we weren't as close in our later in our adult years to our family pet, but just knowing that she meant that much to us, that's just evident, you know, we attach ourselves to a lot of different things in our lives and it's important. Um, so I'm really interested to see um, kind of the characters, how they dive into relationships and kind of how they manage it. Cause I mean, honestly, there's no rule book on how to manage relationships at all. So we're all trying to figure it out. Yeah. Well, let how, me just say, how, sorry, how, let, let me just say first that I'm so sorry to hear that about your guys' childhood pet. That is, that is a hard loss. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, um, for me, uh, the connections I had to relationships is a very um, difficult thing. I definitely fall into a nihilist every once in a while. I have my nihilistic periods and I, during those periods, find myself like questioning how much those relationships should mean. And, you know, when I tell my life story, half of it involves whatever relationship came in and went and how bad they are and how good they were even. But uh, I, I struggle with why that has so much meaning and why that should have so much impact on my life and whether it's a friend or it's family or it's you know exes like I, I really struggle with how a single person can have so much impact into my life and have so much um power is really in how I end up looking at it and so this is going to be an interesting one for me because I I really struggle with giving that power to relationships and I always want to pull it back. I always want to conserve it and keep more of it for myself than for the relationship tie. So I am curious to see how this one I end up connecting to because mm -hmm. there's a solid chance I might throw it over the balcony and like a rage fit. <laughs> like, we'll see. <laughs> you can really relate to that, Bridget. Um, I also, I have a certain sense of fear of rejection and relationships have been very hard for me. I'm a very sensitive soul. <laughs> and, um, and so I feel like 
I have open wounds everywhere, you know, and so I'm, you know, easily uh, triggered um, by a lot of things. And so obviously, you know, I, I get into a lot of fits of resentment with people. And so for that reason, I have a certain sense of emotional detachment sometimes as a way of protecting myself. So I really resonate with that experience of also, you know, almost devaluing relationships as a way of protecting myself and telling myself like, I don't need them. I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, which um, one of the major factors, like it greatly impacts how you interact in relationships. Um, and a major part of that is idealizing people, idolizing people, um, as well as devaluing people and um, being in this place of insecurity in relationships. And so um, for sure, it's, it's been a difficult road with relationships. And I've been in those spaces where, you know, so I, I'm always like pulled in two completely different direction because sometimes I feel like a lone wolf like who just needs to go out and you know find myself and leave everyone else behind um and other times I feel like I need to I literally want to kind of have like a compound with other people <laughs> uh, so I, I'm constantly fighting those two, those two so you're pulled between cult and hermit <laughs> like one of the two you're gonna Wait, but story of my life walking contradiction <laughs> so our fourth question what biases or assumptions can you recognize that you have regarding the novel? Watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, so I read a lot of Nicholas Sparks as a kid, like a lot, like okay. an unhealthy amount. Um, so I think I immediately, anytime I see anything with too much of a romance plot in the synopsis, I just assume the whole thing is Nicholas Sparks. And I'm like, crap, I'm going to have to dredge through this and he's great he's a great writer again no hate to anybody but um yeah I just I I stay so far away from romance books for the most part and like like we've said the romance subplot is usually the least interesting part of the book to me mm -hmm. um which is funny because when I tell my life story I'm like hi here's all these romances I went through look how fun that is <laughs> um so my bias is pretty heavy I I'm trying to go into it with an open mind but obviously I am not so <laughs> yeah there's that big one right there <laughs> well acceptance and admittance is the I'm first step <laughs> least yeah that's that's pretty good for me I was gonna say honestly for me even in my personal life my relationship has been such a magnifier <laughs> of um it's been like a magnifying glass on different different personality traits right different insecurities and so I honestly think relationships in general are a great way to explore the internal makings of someone um, to societal dynamics, to social issues. I think it can be a great opportunity to explore that. I think you and I probably have both felt uh, disappointed or a little underwhelmed by just the, to me, the lack of depth in yeah. some, you know, romance novels or romantic comedies and film and so um, maybe that's kind of where those those biases come from I, Did you have I don't have any preconceived uh, assumptions about it or anything yeah I am eager to see how it turns out I think we all have made the kind of the same comment about everything that might be in the book and now I'm starting to think we might see it be the exact opposite well, look at you being all evolved and open-minded. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're like, our last question will be, what do you all hope to gain from reading this novel? I hope it's just another way for me to be able to practice vulnerability and transparency by maybe learning some lessons within the book. I think that that has been a big pivotal thing for me is, is learning to be transparent and learning to be vulnerable as a way of building community rather than destroying the community. So I'm hoping that there are some nice takeaways from that area. Um, 
going through a, a bit of a quarter life crisis, y'all. And I think um, being around other people my age gives me an outlet to kind of explore that. Um, yeah, I just like exploring what this, this time in my life means for me. Um, it's something that's always on my mind, um, that's heavy on my heart. And so it, it's going to be, I think, both cathartic and healing to, um, to explore that. I guess because I tend to have such like negative views towards like the importance of relationships, I'm kind of hoping to feel a more positive direction towards that because it is so important. And I think that importance gives me a lot of anxiety because I feel like if I'm not constantly surrounding myself by people who create like genuine connection, then I feel like I'm not properly living life. And I'm kind of naturally an introvert. I, I enjoy talking and I enjoy like conversation, but I have a really hard time with people who don't match my energy. And, and I don't just mean that in like, I'm super pumped and blah, 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 blah. But like in the, like our energies don't connect and it don't, doesn't match properly. And that's something I've experienced my entire life. So it's given me a lot of anxiety towards personal connections in general, because I feel like I am doing something wrong. And that is why my energy doesn't match with people in the way that I want it to. So it, it's, I'm hoping that this helps me view it in a more positive way and look at the connections I do have as something that can be more, that, that it's okay that it's not always permanent, but that sometimes it is permanent and that's also okay. And I first wish that for all of you with reading this book. Um, Thank you, Asia. And I think a little bit of everything everybody's been saying, I kind of also wishing that. Um, also just um, for me, I love to feel inspired. And I just think when we read stories about people like a sailor and an academic, they just feel like two very different people. But like, can you, when you realize you can bond over certain things and certain experiences, I just love that so much. It just goes to show that we can really move past surface level like appearances to really bond with people and connect with people. And I really want not only for me to kind of reinforce that understanding so I can get out of my shell and not feel that way when I'm interacting with people, but also just for, you know, our viewers to recognize that when they follow along, it's just, I don't know. I think if we give each other a chance, you know, we'd be so surprised by the people we encounter. What is it? It's, I do not remember the books I've read any more than the food I've eaten, all the same they have made me. And that's kind of how I feel like we're going to play with this book at the end. Yeah, I love that quote. It's one of my favorites. But um, I think we're going to play with that one at the end of like, maybe this won't be the most impactful book that we've ever read. <laughs> and I hope that at the very least, it becomes just part of us and like, yeah. you know, moves us forward in our lives just the same way as any other book we've read and connects to us in the same similar way. Okay, y'all. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, host, for your thoughtful feedback. Your, uh, your engagement. Uh, we appreciate you audience, community members, tribe for being here with us today. Um, we hope you are as excited about diving into this book as we are. You can find uh, the pages that we'll be diving into in our next episode in the description box below. We look forward to seeing you all next time um, and we hope that you'll join us. There's always room for you.